just thinking, um, I want the shapes of these to be correct, so I'm testing their motion. So you can see here, I've got a pen with the two strings taped onto it, just so I can turn it and I can see what the motor will be doing when it transfers its torque, its arm or lever, to the actual, this is the actuation of the joint, and it's a linear transfer of the power from the motor. In this case, my hand twisting is representing the servo motor. Um, I have these wires here to guide the string in the correct direction. Now, these wires just are, I don't know, you know, it's like standard household electrical wires. As you can see here, I just I just cut it and I desheathed um, this electrical wire. This is I don't know what gauge it is, but it's not ideal because this wire is coated in some kind of plastic. It's not very pliable, as you can see. It's a little bit too rigid, and when you bend it, it kinks. And I don't like that it kinks, because that could restrict the motion of the strings inside it. Um, so I'd probably want something a little softer, like like the wire that comes with my headset. See, this won't kink. This will be a lot better type of wire, just like a some kind of electronical wire. So I'm going to be buying some wire when I like move to finalize this more, but I'm just trying to test these joints before I continue making them. I don't want to end up having a bunch of joints that don't work when they take so long to make. They're very meticulous to make um, for all the bone construction. So I'm just trying to visualize these joints. Um, how they'll work properly. trying to get a full range of motion for now even though the thumb may this is the thumb joint even though the thumb may not actually have a full range of motion I want to see that I can pull it off because this joint model is pretty close to the model that will be used for all the joints in the body so if I can nail this then I pretty much have the entire thing down for all the movement, in my opinion. See, what I'm not liking here is when this is bent, this is the knuckle, as you can see here. The knuckle is this metacarpal bone protruding out. This is not this bone extending to here. So this bone somehow ends like right there. Um, so it should come all the way down to here. But this wire is in the way. So I'm going to move this wire back. Try to assimilate that. Reef. This is some strong tape, Gorilla tape. Nothing like duct tape for prototyping. Even though I'm using the semi-final bones, these could be the final bones. I still need to prototype the motion design. Yeah, there you go. There's a full range of motion right there. That's what I wanted. Sometimes I pretend that this is 
um, a leg. This is a thigh, and that's a shin. Foot would be here. I'm trying just to visualize that this is how much a leg bends. So I wanted to get, have a full bend because this this design of this joint is going to be the same for the legs, the same for everything. Okay, I don't like this sticking out like that. It's got to be hugged tight. <laughs> it's funny to think of this as like a leg extension. except it's moving completely the other direction. In order to restrict the range of the reverse motion, I need to redesign the shape of the bone to have more of a cupping on this side. This side of the bone is completely round like that. This needs to be differently shaped. And so I'm glad I did this. This bone will need to be somewhat re-sculpted, I guess, which is frustrating, but I'm learning about how the bones actually rub together. It's pretty much impossible to get any idea of that until I did this. I wouldn't know where to look to see a video of how bones slide against each other. I guess when I upload this video, it will be a good resource for people that want to know how bones slide, slide against each other. It's kind of a cool thing about this project, the way I'm designing it to be similar to the human body, even the joints design, it really gives me an appreciation for how the human body works and it kind of teaches me and anyone watching about how joints actually might work in the human body with ligaments. It's kind of like ligaments, what I'm working with. See, my biggest problem is it wants to like slide. I guess that's natural. You want it to be like this when it's making this turn, so it will be like that. You can see I made this too long, too. But when I carve out some of this back part to reshape it, it should be about the right size then. It needs to be concave instead of convex right here. This, need, this needs to be a cupping joint onto this rounder joint. Needs to like cup onto it. I don't like that when it comes up, it, um, it, it gets this kind of tilt right here that looks unnatural. It should slide kind of like, I don't know, certainly not like mine. First of all, this is backwards. I'm going to try it in the glove for a while. In the glove, it looks really cool. I mean, it, the glove kind of makes it look more... It's just a latex glove. It makes it look more like... 
an actual finger. I don't know. It just kind of adds to the look. Because it hides all the tape and it makes it look cleaner. I love that effect. See, this jutting out won't be there, at least n not nearly so much. Um, with a smaller diameter wire, this is a real big wire casing, and I'm thinking of just using something um, something like ha half of one of these, so just that. Um, that would be perfect and this is more flexible something like this would be ideal and I'll probably just steal that from some electronic part I don't need anymore maybe some wires from an old computer or something I gotta pretend like this is my thumb, that'll be funny. It is a decent range of motion for a finger. Looks pretty dang good. <laughs> I mean, it's not going to look completely human because I believe we have cartilage and lots of muscles. We got entire, like for example, if you look here, if you look here, the extensor hood is right, right like that. And all I've got is just a single string that ends right about here that's connecting into the different joint joints. Um, so a, a whole hood is going to give a more smooth ligament shape. It sure is fun to play with, though, I can tell you that. So this is kind of like a marionette because I just connected it to a pen. And just by twisting my hand like this, I can get the finger to move. That looks really good. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. So I'm just going to be removing um, a cross section like this. Kind of like that. And then this will all be a lot skinnier, but I'm going to remove that so that it's going to be the same size as my as mine. You can see it's a lot longer right there. Um, yeah, I just got to trim out some some of the bone in here. Get it out of there. I'll be good to go. And I figured out that I'm going to be able to take a mold of the bones that, as I finish them and then use the mold to create a second bone that's identical for the opposite hand. So that way I'll have both hands identical. So I want to perfect this one before I do that, obviously. And I wanted to perfect one joint before I continue making more and more bones where I'll have a lot of problems with that. So now I have a better visualization of the joints. 
I also I also would like to test um, the actual motions and how the turning will be um, before when I'm still in the clay stage I should be testing how how these will slide when it turns and stuff um, rather than fully going over it with epoxy and string and creating a rigid structure and then finding out afterward oh the, the joint's not going to work so I need to do that from now on um, test out the motion like this before I finalize and spend all that time so that I'll be able to create the solid shape in the correct fashion the first time. This one I'm going to have to edit, but this one should be okay. I'm really happy with this. Um, a side view of the thumb. I think that could help me out. Well, here's a good side view. Um, as you can see, this has got the cupped shape, and then this has got the cup, and they, they follow each other with the points of contact being very close the whole way down. So it's not like ball on ball. It's ball on cup. So I definitely got to adjust my finger to represent that. I think this, this is acceptable for me. And you can see even, as this finger travels, slides along, its curvature is going to follow the curvature of this. This hump is going to hit this hump and that will stop. So you can see, you can then calculate that the, the final angle would be here. And that's about how far our, our fingers bend back. They're stopped by where the bone stops. And then as it bends forward, you can see that this will slide all the way. And so the finger will go to about there until these top ligaments get so taut that they don't want to tighten anymore. So this is a really great picture to visualize how the ligaments or how the bones need to be shaped for these joints. And you can see that this shape is different than this shape. So this finger would not bend back as far as this. There's not that gap here. So this finger, um, and you can see, okay, mine does a little bit more, but um, this one's designed to bend back a lot more. So it's fascinating. So I need to be aware of these shapes of the joint from the side view in a very serious way when I go to build my finger joints of the bones. That, that matters a lot in terms of how the motion of the bone will be when I actually go when I actually go to spin it it needs to be able to follow a nice smooth tracking My dad's going to love this. This is some real progress. You can actually see how the robot will be moving. And it's going to be great when I just buy a cheap little motor, hook it up, and I can have my computer by USB control this thumb. And then you'll actually start to see a real humanoid robot taking shape for the first time. It's going to really start to take shape when I can connect the actual motor and control this motion by USB.